Um, viewer managed marketplace. Let's talk about that before we go through the viewers. Um, Brooke is here to give us what there is for an update. Thanks, Oz. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in and give a quick update because you haven't heard from us in a while. Basically, what's happening is we are still going through and incorporating user feedback into the viewer, and we're really close to having a new project viewer out. But we are also hopefully closer to the beta. So we're going to look at whether or not it makes sense to, to wait for another feedback session until the beta is out because that will give more people an opportunity to check things out. Uh, so I'll be providing more information on that as we have it. And, uh, and it won't, we won't be going to beta before February 14th. Don't worry. It will happen after that. So we will not be making any changes right before, uh, the, the big sales day. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments? Um, the only question I would have is uh, how much of a heads up are we going to get? For beta? Uh, or, or testing, either. For t well, so we're, uh, we're looking at the schedule right now, but we'll definitely be in beta at least a month if not longer, but the uh, the migration period will be over at least a couple of months. So we'll be in beta, then we'll have to go to production, then we'll be there for a little bit, and after that we will be moving into the migration period where we'll start migrating people and and some people will be able to manually migrate themselves if they would like before that starts. So I'm I'm thinking that each period will be about a month at a cool. minimum. Works for me. Cool. And uh we're let's see. Uh, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm working on coming up with a schedule that we'll be posting once we have agreement by all the the parties on this side, and obviously we'll we'll change it if something comes up that means we need to adjust the schedule. Any other questions or comments? If not, I expect I'll probably be back next time with more of an update on this. And uh, that I'll hand it over to Oz, and I'm going to jump off. Thanks, Brooke. OK, so um, real quickly, apologies for the dogs in the background, if that's coming through. Um, they seem to think there's something outside the house that needs to be barked at. Uh, so we have a collection of bug fixes in a release channel. Also, the Experience Tools viewer is in release channel. Um, that's we we don't expect we we don't know of any changes that that needs uh, in the short term. Uh, it's the the final release of that is basically pending some uh, server-side changes that are coming along, but I don't have a day before them. Um, so uh, I, I don't think that will be long, but I don't have any any um, any fixes ready. So, uh, and we, you know, we are actually getting started on development for another round of changes to, uh, to expand on experience tools functionality a little bit, uh, but that's not going to slow any of this down. Um, so uh, that's out there. There's a, a big collection of bug fixes in a release channel viewer. We keep getting tweaks to those, but it's making progress. Um, 
we will have a release candidate for the avatar hover change uh, next week, I think, assuming all goes according to plan. The simulator that has support for that is in all three of the simulator release channels right now, Blue Steel, Magrum, and La Tigre. And uh, it will be going to, if the plan is for it to go to the main grid, for to the whole grid next week, next Tuesday, in the regular simulator roll. So once that's true, we'll change the hover parameter support to uh, a release candidate um, and make it more generally available. And you can start playing with it anywhere you feel like, and it should work. Um, let's see. Group chat, uh, we, we ha have been deploying more changes to try to address the groups locking up problem. We think we're onto something and making progress on that, but given the frequency, we need a pretty long test before we uh, can be sure that we've got it licked. Um, so uh, we're, we're in that cycle, but not through it yet. And let's see, is there anything else coming up shortly that you need to know about? Uh, the viewer build tools update, I expect will also become a release candidate viewer next week. So those of you who are trying to track our way of building things, uh, that will be changing. Um, once we do a, once that moves to viewer release, that will be the one true way to build viewers or at least our viewer. Um, so, uh, Looking ahead to that is probably a good idea pretty soon. Um, there's a lively discussion going on on open source dev about that, and we're trying to incorporate as much of that into uh, into what we do as possible. Uh, and I think that's all I had to talk about. So the floor is open. Um, I had a couple things I wanted to sort of discuss with Izzy, uh, if that's okay. Um, uh, that would be a good thing to do. <laughs> um, one suggestion that one of our team members had would be for a group uh, for SL, uh, Linden Lab support people and support people from the third party viewers uh, to communicate back and forth with the issues that they're seeing. Uh, as they happen. I don't know how viable that would be from your end, but it, uh, I, I think it would benefit us both. I can definitely, I can definitely pass, it, pass along it along and see, and you know, see. what my supervisors and stuff think about it. I know in the past, there's been resistance to something like that only because it sometimes gets overwhelmed with going outside of uh, proper channels and stuff. But if we'd all agree to, you know, keep it in just an informative fashion, I can see what my supervisors think about it. Yeah, m my thought was, you know, silly things like uh, we could, uh, it, it'd be useful, you know, we start seeing a voice going down for a lot of people, for example, it happened last night. Uh, we could poke in the group and anybody from your support that happened to be in the group would see and, and you know, they could then have the heads up if they if your users uh if premium users came in and yeah it, it, it i agree Paige. it would have to definitely be uh, uh an invite only group the only thing i have on that one is what's the difference between that uh and uh just coming into live chat and letting us know that it's happening uh, well, and by the way, Ed, I'm not against the idea. It's just I know this is what I'm going to hear, so I need to just get your yeah, guys' your point of view on it. Um, well, frankly, uh, my financial situation changed. I'm no longer uh, premium at the moment. Uh, can't swing it for probably another four or five months before I can actually go back to being premium. Um, uh, and quite frankly, I, I don't know about the other uh, support teams for the other viewers. But uh, 
we can generally predict when something's about to happen simply by the reports that we get in our group. Absolutely, and I definitely um, understand and look at that as a good uh, canary in a cage, so to speak. Um, but the thing is, I just have to make sure that we're preempted to not look at it as a way around the normal support channels because you know invariably unless we keep the group members on it really really tight somebody is going to utilize the group for their own personal region problem or whatever and then that ends up ruining the whole purpose uh, yeah no uh, i i hear you there and uh, and i agree that's not what it should be used for um but uh it, it's, I just think it would benefit everybody. It would benefit Linden Lab. Uh, you might get an earlier heads up that there's actually a problem. Um, and it would benefit us if uh, we knew that you knew in some cases, right? Definitely. And yeah, you're right. The information going both ways would definitely be an advantage to everybody. So I definitely will pass it along. Uh, having said that's, that, that, that's a that's a great idea. Um, it, uh, we're actually having a a big get together in San Francisco next week to do um, lots of product planning and discussion. And one of the sessions is how to do communications improvements. So we'll make sure we bring that up in that one. Coolness. Uh, the other thing is. Um, some of the problems that we've been seeing an increase in lately, Izzy, I don't know if you've been seeing them. Um, inventory issues seems to be on an increase. Uh, people not fetching their, their entire inventory. Um, oh, that things going missing. I have seen lots of no res type issues, which is more of a region uh, related issue that's being worked on. Um, but I have actually seen a downtick in the number of inventory cases that have come in lately. So I'll definitely dig into that. And the only other one really is uh, the, the voice issue still where some regions uh, have to be restarted before you can log in there and get voice. And I know and that I know that's, that's something, something that, I'm not sure if it was you, Oz, but somebody was working with our vendor um, about the fact of making sure that the channels restart properly when the regions restart. Yeah, we have added some changes for that, um, but, but we haven't gone back and looked at, at the results lately. There is uh, a new set of SL voice files that you can pick up and start using any time. Um, I sent out a note to TPV announce. Uh, I could, I guess I could put that on open source dev too. Um, hang on a second, I'll get the link. Um, cool, now I got something else I can bug Jess about. Push a couple of buttons here. Um, Actually, let me double check this. I want to make sure I'm giving you the right one here. Um, Uh, that's 
So that's the link to the build results page that has the auto build packages for SL voice, the latest and greatest. Um, Yeah, yeah, Linux is using an older version. It doesn't have nearly as good voice codecs um, as its own sets of problems. But um, I, the this this new set of voice files has some some bug fixes, both to reliability and to quality, and it has a lot of stuff that's intended to uh, support creating voice quality metrics and connection error detection that we couldn't do before. So it's actually both should both be an improvement in in the voice itself and in our ability to measure whether or not the voice is better or worse. Um, so we can uh, we're, we're going to start doing um, regular reporting on that. So the more people that are using this one, the better our measurements will be. And we won't have to rely quite so heavily on anecdotal reports that voice is great or voice is terrible. Right. Cool. That's, I'll that's, be bugging that's, Jess that's, about that that's quickly. That's the version that's in the viewer tools upgrade viewer. Um, we're, which as I say, it's going to go, I expect, it's, it seems to be doing well in, in QA. It's getting a, a, no, no, no code change. It's backwards compatible. Um, the, uh, the tools upgrade version seems to be doing well in QA. Um, lots of Lindens have been using it. Uh, it's not, it's not bad. So um, that's all good. And we'll, we'll, uh, I expect we will produce a release candidate for that next week. Oh, that was another thing. With regards to the uh, hover height, I'm only, uh, I've am only i been doing a little bit of testing. haven't managed to uh, file a JIRA yet, but that will be happening later today. Uh, I've only noticed two issues with it, and uh, they're a little, uh, a little strange, but they're outside the normal use for uh, the hover height. Um, if you're hovering above the ground, like half a meter or more above the ground, and you go to sit down, your avatar goes up. <laughs> um, you don't just sit down, your avatar moves vertical. Um, but that's only if you've got your hover height well above the ground. Uh, the other one is if, you, if you're on the ground or on a prim, and you uh, drop your hover height, your legs sort of fold up around your neck uh, and you will go right underneath the prim but you know i suspect that both of those have to do with accurately detecting whether or not what you're standing on and the relationship between that surface and your feet if you get far enough away it may just decide that you're not standing on it anymore and then it doesn't try to move you down to it when you sit yeah, and like I said, if you're using it the way it's intended to be used, it uh, seems to be uh, pretty much bulletproof from what I've seen. Great. Um, it will be it will be good to get that that bit of code out there. Uh, With any luck, I'll be able to uh, kidnap Orly later and get her to do a video to show it. So. If you do, let me know. Hey, Oz, this is Dennis from SL Go. I was wondering if there's Hi, any. Hey, I was just wondering if there was any um, progress on our. 
I, or on our I teleport have, issue. I have a couple of people from QA um, have turned up the logging and are reproducing it even as we speak so that they can uh, turn over some logs to the developers. To, to well, that sounds a great. Closer look. Sounds so great. Thank you. Crossed. Um, yeah, we're, we're sort of trying to isolate it on this side too. It's uh, really, I mean, what it means is that um, really all the mobile users, anybody on an iPad or a Android device can't get into Second Life or just, you know, it's broken for them basically. Right. We've, um, we have managed to, we, we found where the, the proximate error is. That is where that where things go really wrong, but that's that's actually on the handshake from the originating simulator to the target simulator. Um, what we haven't yet figured out is what happened between the viewer and that simulator that caused that me the the sim to sim message to be wrong. So we're trying to we're trying to track it back to what was different about. It what SLGO did. What, um, for anybody who doesn't know, he's referring to a problem where SLGO users uh, are having trouble teleporting or crossing between regions. Um, so we're working on that. But uh, right. it, was, it was a little, it was the strangest thing because we hadn't changed anything. And it, it, was, it was interesting because we were getting just a few reports here and there, and then more, and then more, and then all of a sudden it was gone. Right. Um, Welcome to Second so. Life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I really appreciate the uh, any uh, you know effort that you can put in. It's a uh, it's a big issue for us. Yeah, yeah. Great. But we're 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 looking we're looking as closely as we can. Great. Thank you very much. Hopefully, hopefully we'll learn something. Great. Um, maybe Avatar Z offset. Throw Avatar in front of it. Oh, uh, uh, it, ground uh, offset. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, switching back to the other subject. Um, well, yeah, um, I will. I will run back. Run that question by our wordsmiths. If that's, I mean, that's an easy. That's an easy change to make if we're if we're going to make it. And, and we could sneak that in while we're rebuilding as a release candidate. It's probably not the most confusing thing in Second Life. Uh, no, I'm with you on that. Uh, users confuse easily. <laughs> should I? I shouldn't say that, should I? Shoot, I confuse easily. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Computing land impact, that's right up there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Um, anything else? These guys are awfully quiet today. Just isn't here. What can I say? Yeah. Besides, you, you got enough snow this week that you uh, deserve to be off early to get out there and uh, shovel at us. Hey, I got six more inches today. I've got to go to right after this meeting. I have to go out and fire up the snowblower. We actually lucked out over here. We only got maybe an inch or two. But granted, it is wet snow this time instead of the light, fluffy snow we got before. Yeah, I could have used a leaf blower to blow the snow off the last time, even though it was a couple of feet deep. It was just like dust. Exactly. Although my plow guy uh, uh, slammed into the house, so the, it all opens out. <laughs> do we do we get finished the half hour, whole half hour early today? Well, I just want to add, since we looks like we might be wrapping up, I'm not going to be here for the next meeting and possibly not the meeting after that. I've got a family medical emergency that I'm taking a short leave for. So just well wishing for all you guys, but that way you know why I won't be here. Well, um, here's hoping your 
family medical emergency goes away quickly. Maybe the maybe the uh, tools upgrade viewer will just magically have solved all the the non-existent cocoa bugs. Um, th th that's a nice thought, Oz. But I, I tend to try to look at it that every release is going to break a lot more. That way, I'm only pleasantly surprised. Yeah, that way it's that's why we sent this the, that viewer off to a long thorough QA cycle. Ed, that sounds either like you've been here a long time or that you don't trust us anymore. Uh, Izzy, I've been doing, I've been officially doing viewer support for over five years now. Um, th does that say it all? <laughs> I'm answer speechless. Is yes. That's actually a very good question for, for Gibson. Uh, not uh, the the answer I think is not seriously. Um, taking things away is problematic. Yeah, some something's going to break for somebody if you ever try to take anything out. So we didn't really even uh, talk about it much. Yeah, we have a habit of incorporating new features into, or new variables into new features that then other features utilize those variables for. And so when we get rid of the old one, it's like, oh, wait, where did this go? So that's yeah. never a good idea. Right. Works for me. We always get users screaming, uh, where did this go? Where did that go? And something gets removed. Exactly. If only 3% of the population is using something and it gets removed because of non-use, those 3% are allowed. Okay, I think we are done. Well, thank you all. Yes, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Ed, that suit looks really interesting barefoot. <laughs> this this is my uh, uh, official look. Uh, that, hey, that sounds really like a beachfront, beachfront sheet. sheet. Well, uh, I, I actually decided when I started Second Life, uh, I went through the normal, you know, tweak this, tweak that. And I decided the one thing I would never change was, was that I wasn't going to wear shoes in Second Life. And it's sort of become my trade. Did that start off having trouble viewing shoes? No, actually, it didn't. <laughs> that was a weird period. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, uh, there's uh, about a half a dozen pictures of me that I know in Second Life with shoes on. And they're collector's, collector's editions. Items. Yeah. All right, you I'm, guys all have a wonderful weekend. You too, and uh, uh, best wishes to you, Izzy. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So, Whirly, Miss Bizzle.
um, what time are you going to be available? And I'll make myself available and we'll get out in and uh, maybe I can talk you into doing a video. Yeah, for testing the hover. Yeah, okay.